Aww, she looks so, so sad. What I have decided to do is to make this a memorable <laughs> moment. So we're going to bring our heads for her face on it. We are going to embarrass her. Mm -hmm. I don't care. That's what I did at my kids' graduation. I embarrassed them. Well, not embarrassed them, but you know, we made so much noise they knew we were there. <laughs> It's really from New Orleans also, man. If it is, that's cute. That they both are from New Orleans. Just seeing Josh walk across the stage, I couldn't help but to think of my brother, Josh, because I just wish that my brother could be here to Josh see Josh looks just like our daddy. But Josh A's father was murdered in 2016. Oh, yeah, him and Rudy. And we are here to represent him. May they rest in peace. Watching Josh like grow up and grab that diploma, <laughs> get ready to head to college. I'm trying to support it you, Miss. It makes mm. me tear up a little bit because she's moving far, far away. So we can't just pull up on her. Mm -hmm. That's what really makes me so emotional. Yeah. Like, they is going to California. Josh mm -hmm. is going to college and. Things are gonna change, and I'm gonna miss them a lot. So. But good thing, um, Beatty lives with her, so that kind of makes up for Josh and um, Regine later. That graduation was so nice. It was a vibe. I really enjoyed it. But anyway, the graduation party is a party. Ray won't be able to attend Josh graduation. Ray better have a ring when he go out of town. He has to travel out of town. Work. I really wanted to be there, but I talked to her, and we're going to turn up when I get back. Mm -hmm. I still can't believe Josh ain't graduated. Like, everybody had a good time. Toya has a kind heart. She wants her the best for her family, like we all do. But I think she, whole, I think she carries the burden of all of it. She carries the burden of the losses of her brothers. She carries the burdens of her mom's um, past addictions, her dad, of all her siblings. I think if she uh, learns self-preservation, kind of relinquish and let everybody be responsible for themselves, but also be there, you know, be an ear and a shoulder and um, encourage them, I think she, I think she would be able to, uh, I think she'd be okay. I, I, you could tell that she stresses out a lot. And when you're stressed, you, you have a short fuse. Because they say she's not easy to talk to. I think it's just like she's got pent up aggression from dealing with all this stuff for years. She just got to let everybody be responsible for themselves. They all grown. Except for the baby. Learn self-preservation, people. Cooking and cooking. <laughs> <laughs> it's the youngest best friend that's always there when you need her. <sighs> Sounds like me for everybody in my life. Child. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Girl, your brother is so serious about having another baby. <laughs> what are they talking about? That's what I say. <laughs> But that's why he want another baby. You keep talking about everybody leaving. Girl, you better stop talking. You better start acting like, hey, this is good. You're not letting up. I think he's serious this, this time. And I'm going to be honest with you. The truth of the matter is why I've been putting it all. I haven't. I really feel like my fibroids are big. Oh, no. Girl, before I ended up getting pregnant with Ryan, I had the mom next to me. So if mm. I have to do this surgery again to have another baby, and girl, that's a lot on my body. Her last surgery recovery was not a good feeling. My was drawn out. Like I was in pain, I couldn't fall. I could and you had other girl. I used to do that all over again, and you know the downtime. I was messed up. Yeah, you busted the the incision open, and we had to go back, and you had to redo that, and then mm. you had to heal all over go that. Over. I couldn't do this. Couldn't drive. Couldn't work. Couldn't. But girl, I don't know. I mean, you scared? I 
I'm really scared. That's a lot on my body. But my biggest thing has been telling me, let me see if I was to have a baby, so I can have it to my baby, not being able to have a baby at all. Because I know how much, you know, I want to have a baby. do is just really move. I do. And and move the, uh, I really want to have a baby, so to be able to take that. No, you know, wait, not thyroid. What did she say? I don't have to think I'm ready to hear anything like that. So that's the part that leaves me torn, because I don't want to disappoint my husband. I know how much having a baby means to him. And I also know that I don't want to put my body through this. Like, oh, sweet. I'm not telling nobody. Or she said she has fibroids. I don't think it should. I think. Mm. Well, I'm these fibroids are removable. But I get it, you know, your body go through the stress, the surgery and all that, I get it, I get it. I, by the grace of God, I've never had to go through that, but uh, I, I know that has to be a lot. Just, um, I think it's a, I think, I'm trying to think, I think I have a cousin who had fibroids. And to my knowledge, holistically is the best way to treat them and to change up your diet. Like, you really have to change up your diet. Leave red meat and pork alone. Like, seriously, like, change up the way you eat, all that alcohol, all that. All that has to stop if you have, if you have repetitive uh, fibroids. You seriously got to change your diet up. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Okay, what I just said a couple of minutes ago. She's holding on to all the family trauma, and then they all lash out at her. Like, I don't know, is it because she's the big sister? Or because they feel like, you know, she went up and left at, what, 15, 16, when she uh, met her first husband, Lil Wayne? And, uh, you know, like, so I guess this is their chance. Like, you were gone, so now's our time to lash out. And all the things that we were feeling when you left, this is our time to, like, let you have it. And that's wrong of them, you know, because they were little kids when she left. So the responsibility laid on her parents, her mother and father. And I get it. They were on um, narcotics or, you know, whatever they, alcohol, whatever they were battling. And... Honestly, I just think this family needs, like, a Ayanna fix, Van Zandt fix my life. I think, like, the whole family needs to come together and do some therapy. They need to do therapy for their childhood, therapy for the family, and therapy for losing the two brothers. Um, yeah, I'm thinking that's, that's just my personal opinion. That I think that they... We'll be able to bond more and have more fun and really enjoy life once they get all that aggression out. It's like all this underlying pent up aggression that most families have because of whatever. That could be it. I mean, when you gotta think about it, the woman lost two kids. Not to mention, she said. Let's pray that it's not to drugs. Let's pray that she's just grieving over her children. I mean, when well, you got to think about it, she went to the doctor. 
She spoke on losing her friend and a sister or two sisters to uh, cancer. Not to mention losing her kids. Her granddaughter just graduated and, her, and the father not there. So she's probably, you know, that's a lot to take in all at once. The anniversary of deaths and birthdays of your loved ones that pass. It's, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot to deal with. So let's send them some positive vibes to Miss Anita. Lots and lots of positive vibes. Lots and lots of positivity to the whole family. Losing a loved one is never easy. Trust you me, I know. Hi, Dr. Jackie. told me you called and you had some questions because I was returning your call. Yes. So they got a doctor. Um, they got all the married to medicine doctors. Dr. Jackie. Back on the baby that I was telling Dr. Contessa? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Mm -hmm. He is so serious. So, I just had a question. Like, I really wanted to know, considering everything that's going on, you know, with my fibroids and where they sit and how big they are, um, if I was to get pregnant. Let's pray for healing for her body, too, you guys. That's a great question. First of all, mm. biggest risk Well, she's on um, Real Housewives with Peter. So, you know, this one second. How I mean, I know, I know. Before I ended up getting pregnant with Rain, I had the fiber surgery and I had to deal with a lot of pain. I lost my independence. <laughs> I missed out on opportunities. So, if I have to do this surgery again to have another baby, I don't know if I could do it. And besides that, I don't know how my husband's going to react to all of this information and everything that's going on. He doesn't love you, so he's going to be there for you, girl. To, you know, expand our family. I'm just scared of disappointing my husband. So it's just telling my husband this stuff. You can't disappoint him. He got your back, girl. I'm in. Mm -hmm. Actually, making a thought of this. Right now, it's actually making me more eager to just move to LA because I haven't been to my house since someone tried to break in, and I just feel like it's weird, you know. So I'm looking forward to this new beginning in my life and just see where it goes. Ooh. All right. Oh, my God. Hi, man. Taina is my friend that I've been knowing since I was 14 years old. We grew up together, but she has moved to LA too. So I'm looking forward to moving to LA and making new memories with Taina. Mm -hmm. I am. I'm nervous. And you know, I haven't been this far away from my mom and just from Atlanta, period. Mm -hmm. like, That's a fabulous stepdaughter. Is oh, excuse me. Change of scenery. Oh, y'all sorry. I'm just yawning. I just feel like my emotions are everywhere because, like, me and Armand always talks about wanting to move to LA. But now that me and Armand are not together, I'm very nervous about moving to LA by myself. I've always kind of like wanted to be in LA, like you know, even when y'all moved to LA, like when I would come out there with y'all, I'm like, yeah. I think I want to move here. I can't. I kept going back and forth with this. So I feel like it's it's about that time. So I'm ready. I just hope you're ready to unpack with me. <laughs> it's all over. We can have a whole packing party. <laughs> 
<laughs> moving is the worst. I need to show up. Mm, look at the cake. Jashay did not want anything big. She told me to only invite a few people. I may have went a little older. <laughs> Red can't be here, but today we're going to party, we're going to eat good, we're going to play games, and we're going to celebrate Jashay. The guy that got beady. <laughs> you look happy. You look like a glowing. Yeah, I love it. Like, I like the space I'm in right now. Like, I feel like I'm feeling, you know, I'm with my family more. I'm getting to, like, learn myself more. And in the midst of having fun, too, with somebody that I like. So, I feel like it's good. Aww. That's good, man. I'm happy. Look at her smiling, girl. Go on, B. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you mess it up. It's so funny that they each say my mama when it's their only mama. Right. This is bringing me back to years ago when my mom would go missing and we didn't know where she was. Mm. I just pray that it's not drug use and I'm just praying that. I don't do that too. I don't just don't put that on there. Really it could just be her she grieving or she just needs some alone time away from the cameras. I 
what you basically just was telling me is that I really need to have the surgery on and have more kids. And mm -hmm. it's just a lot, like a lot for you to put your body through. You know, I already been through the whole thing with like having a mom make for me and stuff. And I don't know if I could do that. It's a lot. Yeah. So heavy. So when he first told me about it, I was the very first yeah. time. Bye. has always been the person that I lean on, you know, before I got married again you know, with friends and everything. Like, she has always been one of the people grew that I together. go to all the time, like, for any situation. And, you know, now things are changing up. You know, she's grown. She decided to make the big move. I mean, I did it. And I did it in a city where I had no family. I had nobody. So I know she got this. She's strong. And she's a lot like me. But I am going to miss her a lot. Mm -hmm. Just know you raised all right, girl. That's that's how you gotta do it. Just know that you instilled in them the right stuff, and hope they take it with them everywhere they go. Casey done did now. Red is finally back in town, and I really have to have this conversation with him so I can tell him the fibroids are back and now they're worse this time. You need to stay out Yeah. You guys are Well, why are you up here then? This is with the kids, Harry. What's up? Hmm? What's up? I'm good. What's up with you? You had a good day. What's wrong with you? What? What's wrong? Why are you so tired? What's wrong with you? That's crazy. You really know me, huh? <laughs> what? What's wrong with you? I'm going to let you know something deep on my mind. Look <laughs> <laughs> at his face. Where do I start? All right, now you're scared. me. So, you know, after me, you was talking. You kept <clears> on wanting <throat> to have another baby. I spoke to my doctor because I asked her about I was having a baby again. So, so I have a bunch of fibroids again. One in particular that she was concerned about because of where it sits. Wait, like they come back and grow back? It's basically. We women go through so I much. I recommend it that I have the surgery. Another surgery? Like the same thing, removing it? Mm hmm. I had no idea fibroids could come back. I know we went through this a couple of years ago. And seeing Toya go through the stuff she went through when she first had the surgery, but man, it hurt. Like, it's my wife. You know, I have to lay beside her every day. I have to talk to her just to hear the pain, see the pain in her eyes, just to hug her, to hold her. I mean, it hurt. And I mean, I'm nervous. I'm scared to do the same thing over again. Yeah, you know, a lot of African-American women deal with it and go through it. And 
Oh, all minorities. Why does African American? All minorities deal with it. But it seems like it plagues us the most. So she said, I can absolutely not get pregnant right now. <sighs> he like, you're going to have that surgery. <laughs> you want a baby. So. Crazy. Like, I don't even know if I want to even. Mm -mm. Yeah, I don't know what to do. It's, it's just too much. You guys had a surgery. You want a baby. When open communication starts. Hmm. This is where couples bump heads. One won't want a baby, one don't. Hmm. We're not going through it alone, dear. That's your family and your husband. Don't worry about the baby stuff. Look at me. Look at me. Okay? Why are you talking to the doctor about me? Because you wanted the baby and I just didn't want to disappoint you. I was trying to see what my health was saying. There's no option. We put that on the back burner. Like, that's not That's not what's going on. She just wanted healthy. I don't really think Red is understanding that the toll that this surgery can have on my it's body is really a lot. And but it, I, it's also mental. Any surgery. I think if you put it in your head of all that could happen and all the pain that you're going through, it's more mental, it's psychosomatic. I think if you don't think about it so much, it won't be so much pressure on you because you know it's something that you have to do. I think that's with any surgery. I think people put so much fear into it and so much, oh, this could happen, this could happen, that could happen. I think if you take the symmetry out of it like stop stressing on it and, and making it a, a thing when you know it's something that you got to do yeah we need a <laughs> we know casey was gonna find her <laughs> now she look cute. <laughs> Go on, need it with the waves, baby. <laughs> Did she go back to the nineties on us with the waves? Well, the finger waves been around, but go on, need it. Casey knew he was gonna find his mama. She look cute. Look at her little waves. Graduations. I don't even want it, but I ain't got no moment. I've been breathing Josh and Moody, you know what I'm saying? I've just been gorgeous things and stuff, and I just don't know how to tell y'all. Josh ain't graduated. I just, I just feel so bad. They just don't want to, they want to make sure she's not back on them drugs. I just feel so bad. I feel so bad. Why you can't talk to us though? Like, we I couldn't do because there was so much going on. My graduation and stuff like that. I just couldn't just ruin that for y'all. You was never going to ruin Josh Josh's graduation. Oh, no. Listen, Josh A don't have a father. Josh A, my mother was not there, so she was looking forward to her grandmother being there, a part of her village, celebrating her going to college. Like, Nanny moves to LA. We didn't have a lot of family moments, but stuff that you say you want to be around and, and, and see more. Yeah, they need family counseling. To get all this out. Don't, don't get me wrong. I get it. You going through, you grieving, you don't want to be bothered. We all had a moment. I don't even want to be bothered at times, but I'm going to let you know I'm good. I get what you're saying. I know everyone grieves differently, and I know that's her sons, and I would never feel that pain that she feels. 
but also like your granddaughter is here and show her that you're here for her as well. Listen, that's where it comes, like you have to understand your role and your position in this family. You are the glue to this family. She's a matriarch. So, like, you gotta keep us like right you know what i'm saying right. that's like that's another thing you see to me i hate to see y'all get along the way y'all was getting along you want my show you got your own book for me i'm your book for me i'm not your mom oh lord i can't take this back i didn't get it too much after that birthday party with you with that little girl i ain't know who was going on i'm here that was a lie i hate that that happened i don't like that like don't be trying to be messy i ain't with that messy Oh, that was getting to me, Tori. I have so much that's getting to me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's how much you can take. Y'all be right, you see what I'm saying? Y'all do things right. All that just gets to me. So y'all can make it right for each other. That's what we do. That's what we hold in the back of my problems. I want to see that, too. I want to see us get it right. Y'all can just get it right. We work in it. We all have problems. We need to stop acting like we all Good for you, Casey. On my Good for you. To, to Definitely take therapy. therapy. Really you know what I'm saying? So Maybe family therapy. I was so good. You just say things case out your mouth. You just make me just go crazy. You make me go crazy. You hit my Lord. I'm failing. The boy just you said he in therapy. Let that man live, y'all. You say the most evil. And I don't think you process what you say to a person and how it affects their lives. Like, I don't think y'all processing somebody to sit in therapy that y'all dumping on them. This is called dumping. That's not okay. That's verbal abuse. So when a person doing things to me, I, you got to look at it. Like, I done seen this forever. Like, I'm tired of it. For real, for real. You ain't been through what I've been through. You ain't been through what I've been through. But we've been through you, stuff. Yeah, you ain't been, been through, through stuff, been. but you've never been through the hardest I've been through. I, put, it on, put it on the table. Put it, whatever the hell you want to say, say it. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. Y'all two was raised with in-laws. Y'all had a situation where y'all was stable. stable. Just listen, where y'all was stable. Me, I didn't have a situation when I was stable. Every day, a, a, a crackhead in our house. Mm. Every day, nothing but drug dealers in our house. Mm. Me and Rudy just stuck in there. Y'all four years old. Every day, you can't sleep. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Mm. Going to jail since I was 10 years old, misguided. I ain't have a father figure to teach me. My mom in the streets running. I'm in the trap. Three in the morning, people knocking on our door every day, every night. I got to live in this house where everybody sit on the porch at and hang and smoke their weed and shoot dice. Just the house I got to live in. Mm. So y'all don't know nothing about that. Mm. For me to go through all that stuff and still remain sane and grind and get it out the mud, that's a accomplishment for me. And when people make me mad, my family members that I love the most, turn it back on me and say about me and talk about me or he ain't doing this and that. I clicks out. Because that's all he ever come. seen. You ain't been through what I've been through. Because okay, that's all he ever seen. Look, see, he can meet her. Look at her. You can see her nerves is itching. See? Mm-hmm. That boiling point. Mm -hmm. 
This one I need therapy. Up out of there because she knows she's the one that put the burnt, uh, the blunt of the trauma on her family. Her decisions and choices of her and her husband did this to these kids. Lord Jesus, help this family. That's right, girl. Learn self preservation. I cannot deal with that, brother. Not. <laughs> Another week. Oh, yeah. Baby still lives with Toya. Hey, was this the man? Anita is now spending more time with the oh, college. Oh, this is the last episode, y'all. But she's still the doctors. Great, they go to the doctor. Casey has been showcasing the house. Casey has been blocked on time. <laughs> Good Lord, please get some. This family needs some Dr. Ken, Dr. Ayala, Toya wait no more and boom and, now they could have gave them at least 10 episodes just six episodes i hope you found their ring okay so they only gave us six episodes for the season y'all um they could at least gave him 10 because this was a good show. So I hope it gets renewed. I hope it gets picked up again. Um, so what I'll say is this was a good show. I'm glad I reviewed it. I'm glad you guys were into it. I appreciate you guys clicking on my videos and being here for the commentary. I really do appreciate that. Um, this was a perfect example of why it's important. Like seriously, seriously, I can't stress how important it is. For people to get therapy each one of them had a situation and each one of them dealt with the situation differently each one of them held in their trauma so I think which I really don't understand like because with all we TV shows it's either Ayama, Dr. Ken or some psychiatrist or psychologist that comes in and helps the family like that I think they really should have did family counseling hopefully it gets picked up and this is just my take on it I'm hoping the show gets a season two and in season two I hope it's a lot of family counseling so they can work through this and hopefully they'll bring the dad in because it seems like all the trauma is stemming from the mom and dad so if they can get to the core of it I think they can work through this because like Casey said him and Rudy were with the dad, so they endured more of what was going on while Anita was out there doing, you know, whatever. Toya and Beatty were taken out of the situ situation, so I don't know where um, Josh was because Casey just said him and Rudy, so maybe Josh was there too. I don't know uh, because none of them touched on where he was, but just know that you can get help you can always get help no you're not your past trauma you're not what you went through none of us are everybody has had trauma in their life everybody it's nobody coming through the birth canal you're going through trauma just coming into this world all the hell you go through just to push a baby out and for the baby to come into the world that's trauma in itself so for all of us whom have lost loved ones for all of us who are dealing with trauma from childhood or past relationships or 
just any kind of trauma you've been through, don't let that mold you. Don't let that define you. Don't make that your characteristic trait. Don't make your trauma be a trait in your life. Find the best way to deal with that trauma. Find the best way to face that trauma, embrace that trauma, then release that trauma and never, ever touch it again. Once you embrace it, once you understand that, okay, it was not my decision and my choice. It's what my parents chose. And because of their choices and their actions, I had to deal with this. And this is what I went through. But I am not that trauma. I am not what I went through as a kid. I'm not what I went through as an adult. I'm not that if you went through an abuse, I'm not the abuse that was put on me. I'm not the, uh, how can we say, I'm not, well, okay, we'll even do this. You have some people, prime example of, I'm going to go back to Anita. I believe Miss Anita went missing as much as she did because she didn't want her kids inflicted by her choices. So they went to family members and they, and the ones that did go to the dad, probably the father thinking, you know, whatever he grew up with, that the best man to raise his kids was him. Now, girls, he probably thought, yeah, it'd be better off with aunts, cousins, whatever. But he probably took his sons in thinking, I'm going to show them how to be men. And by his thought of being a man is, I'm out here trapping in the trap house. This is how I make my money. And this is going to mold and make y'all the men that you are. He, That's probably all their dad knew. And that's where the trauma starts. It's generational. You don't know what that father went through. You don't know what Miss Anita went through. Parents go through what they go through. Their parents go through what they go through and so forth. It all starts from the beginning on it works. Out, it trickles down through the family. But at some point, someone has to say enough is enough. I'm going to cut and break this generational curse right now. I will no longer let this generational curse employ, employed in my family. I will not take it through and, and make it mine. I, you know, bury that generational curse, cut it off, cut it at the head, cut it, slice the head of that generational curse off, bury it and touch it no more. Don't tear it, take it and bring it on to your kids and grandkids. Find a way to just end it all, end, end all that generational curse, bury it, get help, get help. Don't be afraid to get a third party help. It doesn't have to be family. It doesn't have to be a friend. It could be professional help. Sometimes you need therapy from a third party that's non-biased and not a family member. So this is my take. All you content creators, keep doing your thing. Keep putting out your content. Do not get stagnant. The best way to grow a channel is to keep putting out content. Community wall, shorts. Keep it going. I support you all. I am encouraging you all. Anyone going through something, pray on it. Get help. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. No one's judging you because no one can judge you. Like the Bible said, let he without sin cast the first stone. And now nobody can throw a stone. Not a rock, a pebble, a penny, a nickel, a dime. All right. This has been great. Um, I have all the Queen's men to review. Um... Due to the strike, a couple of the shows that I was reviewing. And you know what? That could be it, too. Because of the writer's strike, they had to stop the show at 6. Because a couple of the other shows I've been watching, they all stop at um, episode 6. When normally, they get 10 episodes. That's crazy, but okay. And we'll be back on Sisters uh, next week. Or the middle of the week. Middle of the month, I mean. Because it, I think it's October. I know it's coming up soon. So then I'll be back to reviewing sisters and I will back. What else? I'll be back to reviewing sisters, all the Queens men. And there's a few other little shows that I've been um, really into that. I'm going to see if I'm um, review them or not. All right, guys, thanks for being here for me and let's keep doing it. You know, let's keep doing it. Let's keep putting out content. All right, guys. Smooches.